So I'm reminded 10 years ago, almost exactly, Eric Schmidt resigned from Apple's board yet again, and that sort of marked the escalation of the smartphone and consumer cloud wars. Apple put out a much lengthier statement back then saying, hey, it's because of Android and Chrome, Chrome mm -hmm. OS, uh, we can't have him on the board anymore. He's gonna have to recuse himself from everything. So, yes. are the costs here worth it? This has been a great partnership for Apple and Disney. They had all these launches together. That presumably isn't gonna happen at least as much anymore. Okay. No, not at all. I mean, it just was an inevitable move because of, of Apple moving very strongly in the entertainment business, and it absolutely has to. And the, imagine these board meetings that Bob Iger would have to leave constantly because these were in discussions. And they're not just, uh, just entertainment's not just one thing and then they have another thing. It's all interrelated. And so you can't have a discussion about the future of Apple and its hardware products without talking about its, both its software products and its entertainment products. And so it's very hard to have someone like Bob Iger in the room, and it's hard for him to be there. And he stepped down, which was the right thing to do, as was the case with Sheryl Sandberg on the, on the Disney board. Not so much Jack Dorsey as, as, uh, as Reed Hastings coming off the Facebook board. Um, and, and other moves like that, and obviously Eric Schmidt a long time ago when Apple and Android were very clearly going to clash uh, with phone systems. No, it looked for a while like Tim Cook might have to step down from the Nike board, but Nike mm -hmm. decided not to do health and fitness devices to sort of right. back away from that area. He's still on. Could it be that either Apple or Disney might be making a mistake here trying to expand out of its core? No, these are direct clashes. I mean, I think this is very cordial. I think they have a great relationship. And I I believe that the, the that Lorraine Powell Jobs still has a large stake in Disney. But the fact of the matter is, this, these companies are going to be competing, and I don't think there's any acrimony. There doesn't seem to be. It's just the right thing to do from a conflict of interest point of view, from a board point of view. There's no way he can serve as a really good board member. You know, and Bob Iger is one of the, t you know, really sharp executives around in media or, or even tech because he's very tech savvy. Um, and I think he understand, probably understands very clearly that he can't do his job at Disney uh, with, by being on the Apple board. And the Apple board realizes that he's not going to do that good a job on that board given the conflicts. And it just, it's just makes a lot of sense. So it's just not going to happen that, that very direct competitors should be on boards of each other. Kara, I know we've talked about this a lot in the, the past week, especially, especially after that Apple event, but just to revisit it one more time, <laughs> what can we glean from this news about just how seriously Apple is uh, treating its streaming service, the fact that it's a $4.99 price and just mm -hmm. how it's thinking about it, not only short term, but long term now? Well, they need more content. I think it's just starting with nine titles. It's some small amount, and Disney has so much content. And so the issue is how much money are they willing to spend? But it seems to me Apple cannot just rely on its hardware business going forward. I mean, it's a very successful business. But the fact of the matter is, think about what's happening with its music service. It really is catching fire in a lot of ways. And so the question is, can it do the same in entertainment? And it really has to, which is something I had talked about years ago, that would Disney buy a content company? I'm not Disney, I'm sorry, Apple buy a content company. And would Disney buy a tech company? Um, you know, these are the same businesses in a lot of ways. And the question is, can they do it creatively? Can they create great shows? Or is it more haphazard the way Amazon has done it? Uh, but they all have to think about it for their, for their future, no question. I was going to say, Kara, I mean, is there any evidence as to how they would do this strategically? Can you look at music and beats as to, de to decide whether they can truly do this in-house or have to buy something large outside? I always thought that. You know, we talked about that years ago. Um, I think I think it's it's I think the, the quality of executive is very high at Apple, but the fact of the matter is they don't have any uh, expertise in this area, and they have been hiring. You know, they've hired some great people, but it's a big you know getting into the entertainment business is not is not easy. I've always thought that they should buy Netflix, but that's just me saying that. Um, and there's no <laughs> nothing to it. I just years ago I think I said it. It just made a lot of sense to me. Um, but I think they definitely need to think about. Um, how to do this properly and this is a group of people that's really good at hardware less good at software and very new to entertainment so we'll see you know there's these shows coming out with Reese Witherspoon and Jennifer Aniston there's a bunch of other shows some of their very early shows were not very good um, but it's a it's a it's going to be a learning experience for the people of Apple for sure